Hello and welcome to today's episode where I show you HM2 style pedals with lots of knobs. So a couple of weeks ago I did a video where I showed you HM2 style pedals with one knob or with just two knobs, so I thought why not do the opposite and show you HM2 pedals with way too many knobs or with many knobs. And um, if a uh, brief historical explanation here, basically the first pedal that uh, expanded the range of knobs with the HM2, at least to my knowledge, um, correct me if I'm wrong, down in the comment section, was the enormous door left hand path. It basically split up the high peaks and added another presence control. So for the pedals I chose, I said, well, it has to have more control knobs than the enormous store left hand path. So only pedals with more than six control knobs are featured. But before we start to show you the actual pedals, I have a few honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is the Pippa's Paddles Humongous Distortion. And while it has seven knobs, it would qualify actually. The seventh knob is actually just a, well, a mode selection where we can select different, um, basically, paddles. We have the HM2, then we have the HM3, and we have the DoD Thresh Metal, Thresh Master, something like that. So doesn't really work for me. So, honorable mention. Another honorable mention are the two Left Hand Wrath by Lone Wolf Audio, or no, Lone Wolf Audio, Void Manufacturing now. Um, while they do have seven knobs and actually one mini switch and two foot switches, I didn't select them because I will feature enough products by Lone Wolf Audio. And um, so I thought they aren't needed. However, um, I really like the version 2 and the version 3 is, in my opinion, one of the best HM2 style pedals money can buy. So, and the last honorable mention is yet again from Lone Wolf Audio, it's the 8-ball EQ. And the same goes for the Brick EQ. I don't feature them, they are based to make any pedal sound like an HM2, however, they lack the gain section. And um, one of my rules was that it actually has to be a distortion pedal. And since this is an EQ, it's excluded. But it's awesome. The first contestant is the Swedish Steel by Electric Eye Audio. It has a total of seven control knobs, which is one more than six, obviously. And it has a switch. The special feature here is the dedicated travel control. So we have a three-band EQ and two knobs that are for the integrated boost channel. So we basically have a boost and a tight control that lets us cut bass. Next up, we have the Northern Mola. This one has eight channels and you might think it's kind of cheating because those three are just for the dedicated uh, distortion channel and not specifically for the chainsaw channel. However, it is a pedal that can do the chainsaw. It has more than six knobs, so I thought to include it. Apart from the three-band EQ that's dedicated to the distortion channel, we have two control knobs dedicated for the chainsaw channel, bite and growl, volume, distortion, and a blend control. Next up is the Hell Melter by Electro Harmonics. Here we have eight control knobs and one switch. The switch basically activates a kind of a boost channel. And we also have a three band EQ with a parametric mid band. Then we do have a dry level, which is basically a blend. And we have an internal gate. Next one, the clear tone grindstein. This spell has nine knobs and a switch. And again, it's a little bit as with the Northern Mauler. We have actually three knobs that are dedicated to the distortion channel. But here we have three knobs for the dedicated chainsaw channel, a blend control, an additional boost, a master volume, 
and we can actually flip the face for the mix. Again, nine knobs and two foot switches, the Long Move Audio Left Hand Breath Deluxe. This is version two, and we have a three band EQ, an additional presence control, volume gain. We do have a blend, and we can select with the freck control how much we want to tighten the bass. And with the sub, we have some tweaking options for the peak of the mid and high control. Here we can actually engage a bit another clipping option so it gets more compressed. Now you might wonder why I would include another pedal of Lone Wolf Audio, but this is the Left Hand Breath Deluxe version 3 and it's a total different approach. All the knobs have the same name, but mids and highs are actually different. We have different frequencies and we can actually select those frequencies with the frag control, so it's not longer for bass. And with a sub, we can select we can actually tweak the mids even more. So both are kind of uh, make the pedal kind of parametric. And here we have another tonal option. Continuing with the void manufacturing trend killer, we have 10 control knobs and two switches. We have our three vent EQ. The mids are actually tweakable, kind of parametric, gain volume, we have a clipping option, so for different clippings. Then we can select the Q peak for the mids and we can actually add another EQ, basically another mid band where we can sweep and select the peak. Continuing with the This Every Earth Crusty Fiction, we have 10 control knobs. Four band EQ, two dedicated mid controls, level, a uh, clipping control, gain, an integrated gate, as well as a clean blend with an additional option to control the volume of the clean. And here we can actually disengage the distortion and use the, just the EQ section of the pedal. Counting 10 control knobs and two switches, the Lichtlärm Medusa. Apart from the four band EQ with the sweepable mid frequency band, we have gain and level, then we have cut that lets you basically cut the bass before it hits the gain stage. We have a blend control with a polarity switch. We have two different voicings, modern and classic or clipping options and an integrated gate. The predecessor of the Medusa actually has 11 control knobs and one switch, which is the breathe die. This one is a bit different. We have a mid band uh, with adjustable frequencies basically with a shift with low high we have a band we have an expander it's kind of like a gate but not as g good or as drastic and we do have an additional boost circuit with an additional grid control boost control and the range so basically where it boosts and the face is again for the blend and the pedal with the most knobs quotes that I have is the KMA Audio Guardian of the Worm. If we count those as knobs, we have a total of 12 knobs and two switches. So what do we have? We have gain and master, that's okay. We have three different clipping options. Then we have a four band EQ where we can select the frequency. So four parametric mids. Here we can select if we want to have the high mid control of the original HM2 or the specific KMA high peak or both. And we have a clean blend as well as a gate. The gate is, can be activated via the tame switch. So for the playthrough, I chose my PRS MT15 as an amp and you hear two sounds, uh, one in front of the clean channel and one in front of the driven channel of the MT15. I'll show you the knob settings um, when the clean sound is played. And uh, this goes directly into the Zua reactive load box and from there it goes into Nadir where I've selected the Jens Bogren Greasy Beard IR and well, yeah, that's about it. With the uh, sounds I dialed in, please keep this in mind, uh, two things. 
First thing, uh, not all pedals are designed to sound good in any application. There are pedals that don't sound good in front of a clean amp. So you have to keep this in mind. You also have to keep in mind that I don't really like the sound of an HM2 pedal in front of a clean amp. I highly prefer it in front of a slightly overdriven amp. So I might have not been able to dial in the perfect sound for everyone. Speaking of dialing in sound, I wanted to make it quick. So I actually set myself a time limit for about 20 to 30 seconds. And in this time frame, I had to come up with a good sound. Sometimes I succeeded in my ears, sometimes I did not succeed. So keep this in mind and don't say this pedal sounds awful or this pedal sounds the best or so. Just keep it in mind and maybe your ears and your fingers will dial in a different tone that is much more to your liking. Therefore, I highly suggest checking out the in-depth reviews of the pedals if you're interested. Or leave a comment down below in the comment section if you want to see uh, that I play around with another pedal. So, and with this being said, let's start with the actual audio comparison.
So that's it. Besides all the disclaimers I made, what's your favorite? Which pedal surprised you and which pedal didn't surprise you because you already knew it was awesome? Leave a comment down below in the comment section. And if you want to support this channel, you might want to consider becoming a YouTube member or slash and you uh, want to check out the links in the description. I have some affiliate links there that help the channel actually a lot. Well, and with this being said, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. May the power protect you and have a nice day.